out on Twitter, Tariq Nasheed. Uh, oh my God, I do not like him. You know, I swear, I feel like he's an agent. An agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They try and they try and separate the black community. Mind you, here's the guy who talking about descendants of slaves. You know, uh, married to a, a white lady. Tariq Nashi versus Uncle Luke was not expected on my bingo card today. But since we're here, let's get into it. Is y'all ready to talk about this beef? Because it is crazy. Let's juice. Come on, Blaze. It's a beef for me. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Voodoo Doll TV, bake with a quick little joke, or whatever the case may be. And Uncle Luke is going at it with Tariq Nasheed because Uncle Luke feels like Tariq Nasheed with FBA is trying to divide the black community. And he's also a stark Camilla Scamilla fan he is around promoting her everywhere he goes he's all scamala 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 but i got receipts to show that he hasn't always felt that way but we'll get into that later now let me tell you what's really been going on so tariq nasheed is the leader of a group called fba it stands for foundational black americans and this is basically a distinction upon black americans versus other people from the diaspora such as africans caribbeans afro latinas it's almost like foundational black americans are literally saying hey we're all black but you guys have an identity and so do we so that's where fba comes from it also stems according to other people from ADOS, African Descendants of Slaves. And I was told that Tyreek literally snatched that idea from the founder of ADOS. I'll let y'all fight that out in the comments. But nevertheless, that's what and who Tyreek is. He's the leader of FBA. Now, although I don't subscribe to FBA, I do subscribe to the message. I do believe that Black Americans need to delineate. We need to have our own identity. Because for long periods of time, black Americans has never had an identity while everybody else has. Now, ever since this movement started taking place, a lot of people in the diaspora are going around saying that Tariq is being a separatist or he's doing something negative or OMG, why are you guys trying to separate from us? And to be completely honest, this is no shade, but if it's shade, it is what it is. Get an umbrella. Um... I don't care what these people think. Black Americans will not be gaslit to fit everybody else's narrative. We will not do it. I think that it is a great thing that black Americans are literally separating themselves from the rest of the diaspora. And when I say separate, I don't mean, hey, you guys can't come swim in my pool or play with my, my toys or nothing like that. What I'm saying is we are finding our identity. A lot of us are waking up to who we are. And we find that a lot of people around the diaspora, because this is new to them, are literally taking it as a negative thing. When everybody else fly their flag and everybody else has their culture, black Americans are left just being and black Americans are waking up to our identity and we want to have our own identity. We will no longer be swallowed under the black or pan-African umbrella. We will not do it. Plus we ain't from Africa, but that's a whole nother story. So anyway, Tyreek is literally on his FBA time uh, and uncle Luke don't like it. But before we get into that, let me give y'all a little taste of how Tyreek is and who he is and what his message is. Is y'all check this out? The Civil War was not about freeing us. That was an afterthought. The North and the South were having a little brotherly spat. It wasn't about freeing us. The South was getting too powerful. The Union owned slaves up there in the North. Black people were enslaved in all those many of those northern cities. And after the Civil, so remember the North was losing the Civil War. It was Black people who came in and fought and helped them win the Civil War. After black people helped them win the Civil War, and let's be clear, if it was not for black soldiers fighting, the Civil War would not have been won by the North. All those military schools were in the South. The South was beating the brakes off the North. The North said, okay, we need to let some of these black folks fight too. That's when they started winning. We saved them. We spilled blood in Selma. And not only that, when black folks fought and saved the Union by fighting in the Civil War, after the Civil War, Union soldiers went down South and put black folks in concentration camps and killed them down there in Mississippi, down at the Devil's Punch Bowl. Look that up. Those Union soldiers carried out a genocide against thousands of black people down there that they don't like talking about. These are the Union soldiers who did this, not the Confederates. The Union soldiers did this. Look up the Devil's Punch Bowl in Mississippi. 
It's time to speak truth to power to these white supremacist lies. When you think of black people, you think of foundational black Americans. That's the first thing you think. We are the face of black people around the world. Because this, for the most part, our minds have not been colonized. A lot of people in other countries, their minds have been colonized. That's why they'll sit up and you know, let all types of stuff go down when you are the majority of the population. Now, we gave it the old college try to, to reach out to other groups. They weren't reaching out. Okay, do you. Do you. Hold your own nuts. Knock yourself out. What we're going to do, we recognize this is our land. See, for a long time, we've been tricked with the word African. Not to disparage our African brothers and sisters. Other groups in the Western Hemisphere, Jamaicans, they don't say Jamaican. African Jamaicans, they say Jamaicans. They don't say African Trinidadians, they say Trinidadians. They don't say African Dominicans, they say Dominicans. But we've been tricked to say, okay, well, you are an African American. You're an other. See, when we say African American, that's making us comparative to an immigrant. We have to reject that immigrant talk as it applies to us with everything. There's nothing immigrant about us at all, but we are a brand new ethnic group. And we are a very unique ethnic group who went through a very unique experience, which is the American slave trade. And we survived that. We have to recognize that. So there are some examples of who Tariq Nasheed is and what his message is. And again, I don't agree with a lot of what Tariq does and his messages, but this I agree with. I have to ask myself though, is this a grift or is this real? It doesn't even matter though because people are getting on code and that's all that matters. Because I do recall a time where Tyreek was whole Pan-African, you know, type tease. You know what I mean? He always separated us in a way, but it was kind of Pan-African if I can recall. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter. He's getting people on code. People are waking up and that's all that matters. And let me just say this. I want to piggyback off some of what Tyreek said. So Tyreek was speaking about us being different from the other immigrants. And this is very important because black Americans who are indigenous to this land has gone through trials and tribulations that no other group in the so-called diaspora has experienced. We are a special class and a different class of people. One thing Tariq said that was true, the entire world, not just the diaspora, look to black America for every single thing. And we've gone through so much on this land to where literally we are fighting for what's owed to us. Now, what's important to know about this is there are a lot of immigrants coming into America and that's fine. Our ancestors literally fought for the right for them to come over. But a lot of them are mixing in and blending in with black Americans, making it seem as if we're all the same. When the fact of the matter is when it's time to separate for any little thing, everybody in the diaspora leaves us. They do. They separate and they go back to whatever culture it is. Rather, it's Nigerian, Kenyan, Jamaican, Trinidadian. It does not matter. And we're left holding the bag, yet we're we're still the ones most depended on and these are facts and I know that to be fact because everybody who comes to America takes on some component of black culture and when I say black culture I don't mean black culture as a whole as the diaspora I mean black American culture because we set the tone around the world and these are the facts so we've gone through things on this land this particular land that no other group in the diaspora has gone through. And I think it is extremely disingenuous for anybody outside of black Americans to literally look at us and feel like we're wrong or we're doing something wrong. That's not okay. And it's very disingenuous. And people like that, I'm with Tariq Nasheed. I don't want you around me. You can literally separate yourself and go over there. But nevertheless, I also have to add this part. Tariq Nasheed has a very sketchy past. Uh, he has the Hidden History Museum over in California. He was before that a pimp. A whole lot of things done going on with Tariq and a lot of black Americans question him and people outside of black America as well question him. I don't blame him. I question him sometimes too. But as far as us having our own identity, I'm behind Tariq. One trillion percent. And we will not be gaslit into feeling like we shouldn't do that. And that's just that on that. Now, Tariq Nasheed has this back and forth with Uncle Luke. A lot of you guys may or may not be familiar with Uncle Luke. Now, Uncle Luke is a rapper from the 90s whose lyrics were always raunchy, nasty. He even had to go into court and fight for his uh, right of speech or whatever the case may be because people were rejecting it all over America. But Uncle Luke ultimately won his case and he was able to put out the most degrading records of all time about black women. Now, a lot of people may say, well, you know, you guys dance to it, so how you gonna get mad? We did. And honestly, as a young girl, I should not... <laughs> 
have even been listening to Uncle Luca. I literally had to hear it outside of the home because my mama didn't play that. You know what I mean? But it was very raunchy, very raw, and very demeaning to black women. It was new, but it still was just that. Well, since then, Uncle Luke seemed to have changed his life. He's into kids with football. He does a lot for the youth in the community out in Miami. And a lot of people like Uncle Luke. And I used to like him too up until now because I feel like he's being disingenuous as it pertains to this whole situation. And even more importantly, as it pertains to Scamala Harris. Now, Uncle Luke is the greatest biggest ambassador for Scamala Harris. He literally goes around to everybody telling them to vote for Scamala. He condemns black Americans if they don't vote for Scamala Harris. And the biggest problem with that is Uncle Luke is a foreigner. He is not a foundational black American. His parents come from the Caribbean. And we've spoken about this on this channel before. It's not an issue that he is a foreigner. It's the mindset of the foreigners that come here like Uncle Luke and feel like they can lump us all in together when it benefits them. But then turn around and condemn us and point the finger and wag at us whenever they get upset. I want to show you some of what Uncle Luke has been doing out here in these streets to promote Scamala. And I'll come back with a little commentary. So we got Camilla, right? Huh? We got Camilla, right? Camilla, right? We got Camilla. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Camilla, right? We got Camilla, right? Oh, oh, now what's she laughing? She was she good? We got Camilla, right? No, you take are you taking them? Huh? No, you taking me. You taking me. Oh, okay. Why are you taking me? That's right, and, I, and they deserve it. Any of y'all, uh, y'all ain't with Trump. I don't know. No, no, no. That's my girl. She wants to be with her. That's the thing. Right. So there you have it. He literally goes around everywhere, even online, and he is Scamala, 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 Scamala. He wants everybody to vote for Scamala, and the problem is we don't have a problem with that, but how dare Uncle Luke look down on us or wag his finger at us if we say we're not going to vote? Actually, to be completely honest, we have more to lose in this election than anybody because a lot of foreigners are getting kickbacks. A lot of foreigners are getting things that we as black Americans don't get. So we don't need a foreigner telling us what we should and should be doing or who we should and should be voting for, okay? So fast forward, Uncle Luke takes to his Instagram or Twitter, I don't remember. He's always in Twitter spaces. And he gets on here and he basically tell black Americans they have X amount of time, or I think he said to the end of the week, to decide that they're gonna vote for Scamala. And I'm over here saying, or what? Like, what are you gonna do? Check out this clip. Message to all black men who left the Democratic Party for the mega party. I'm gonna offer you this one time, one time opportunity to come back. You can come back. You have until Sunday, 12 high noon. We'll take you back. We'll take you back. There's no more blue, no matter who. It's come on, I'm on a bang, bang. Come on, I'm on a bang, bang. Coach, coach, coach. So, okay, there it is. He's literally telling black American men who decided to go over to the Trump side of the house that they have to come back or they, they have a, a deadline before they can come back, which is Sunday. And I know it seems like he was being funny and he was just on here saying whatever he's saying, but Uncle Luke has influence and he knows what he's doing. He's using his influence to basically garner the attention of black Americans and get them to come back on the other side. But my thing is, again, who is Uncle Luke to tell black Americans how to vote? This is our land. We are on our land dealing with our government. And I'm not saying that he's not dealing with the same government because he lives here. But who are you to tell us what to do? You're nobody, Uncle Luke. And a lot of us who respected you and who liked you in the past, we no longer like you anymore. 
it's like we're starting to see the veil lifted from a lot of these celebrities uh, who are running behind this lady and getting all these people confused and doing all these things. And it's like, we don't like it. Uncle Luke really thinks that he's in a position to talk to black Americans any type of way he wants to only because he's Uncle Luke or I don't know what he thinks in his head, but that's just not going to work. And black American men will continue to vote for whoever it is, right? There be Scamala or Trump. I don't care, but they will not be told what they will and won't do you guys check out this clip of how uncle luke addresses black america check this out i'm getting sick and tired of you motherfucking negroes who's out here trying to take the blackness away from kamala harris our vp and soon to be president because your daddy donald trump gives you these talking messages so you repeat the dumb shit oh she's an indian she's black on occasions really make that shit make sense black hbcu pledge in one of the most prestigious black sororities aka member of the black caucus born and raised in black oakland yes she went abroad like a lot of uh, all of us go abroad into Canada and stay for a few years, come back, go to college, state attorney, prosecutor, member of the Black Caucus, stand up on, in, in, in the Senate for black issues time and time after again, y'all, man. In the words of Chad Johnson, child please. Literally everything he just said was wrong. Number one, Black Americans were not honing in on Kamala's race until Kamala came out and cosplay as a black American. It was Kamala Harris who was coming to black America telling us that she was a black woman whole time. She's never claimed to be black until it was time to run for vice president. This was all Scamala, not us. It was Scamala who came on using black tropes, such as what you see here in the photo, greens, talking about how she washed them in the bathtub, talking about black things as if she really lived the black American experience. It was her. And we literally just called it out. And now people are mad and using it against us. Check out this clip of her talking about these greens. So I know how to make a mean pot of greens. In fact, people used to ask me to make greens for them for Christmas. One year, I had so many that I had to wash that we ended up washing them in the bathtub. You see, that was so cringe. It was ridiculous. It was extremely, extremely cringe. It was just disgusting. So nobody's picking on Scamala. Scamala is over here cosplaying, okay? Another thing you said that was wrong. Uncle Luke tells us she was a part of the Black Caucus and she grew up in California, Oakland, a black city. No, she did not. She grew up in Canada. Oh, and she went abroad like most of us do. No, sir. Most black Americans do not go abroad to live. We are born and bred in America here. We don't leave to go live in other countries by the numbers. We just don't. So that's a foreigner mentality there. Then he goes on to say she went to an HBCU and she pledged for a prestigious HBCU or historically black sorority. Well, I have a question for you. If those are the things that make a person black, then riddle me this. What about her? I'm trying to see something. She went to a historically black college and university. She pledged Delta, which is another prestigious divine nine organization under HBCUs and black Americans. Is she black? No, she's not. None of those things make this woman a black American. So we are just pointing out the fact that Scamala tried to scam us and say that she's a black American. And the fact of the matter is she is not. And then another thing, Uncle Luke, you sitting up here talking about Negroes, Negroes, Negroes. I'm tired of you, Negroes. We tired of you. You have literally poisoned our culture. Everything that you have done in your career as a rapper, I'm not talking about the football thing, has been nothing but poison to our culture. And you don't get to sit up after poisoning our culture for decades and tell us anything about who and what we decide to do. You just don't get to do it.
period. Again, I used to like Uncle Luke. I loved what he was doing with the kids and I still love what he's doing with the kids. But when it comes to this situation, you need to sit this one out, bro, because we can really raw you out. We can really, as black Americans, gather our things and get together and raw you out. But back to Scamala, we gonna let you live. Although Scamala has pledged AKA, that's cool and that's fine and all dandy, but at the end of the day, that's between her and her sorors. There's only a small, small, very small group of black Americans that even go D9. So we're not letting them speak for us either. So using that as an example does nothing for black Americans because we, although we support our family and friends who decide to go the D9 way, we do not allow the D9 to dictate what happens in black America. We're done with that. We're not doing it. That's between Scamala and her sorors. Now, as it pertains to Kamala or Scamala herself, she has said that she's not doing anything for black Americans. So if other black Americans say they don't want to vote for her, they have every right to. And actually, they're very smart not to because we are done giving away our vote and getting no tangibles in return. So I don't think that anybody who tells you to do something that gets you nothing in return is a person that really care about you or really want to see you succeed. Because Scamala, like I said, has made it clear in her words let's be clear i'm not doing anything that's gonna only benefit black people check it out the, the reality also is this any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society let's be clear about that let's really be clear about that so i'm not gonna sit here and say i'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people no because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole in the country so again, anybody who says they're not going to vote for Scamala and she tells us to our face, she's not going to do anything specifically for us as she's done for the Asians, as she's done for the Indians, as she's done for the LGBTQ community and things all over the world. But yet we are going to be told we're going to get nothing. Yeah, we're done. We don't need to hear anymore. If we don't want to vote for her, we won't. And we will not be chastised by the likes of Uncle Luke. So back to this beef with him and Tariq Nasheed. So Tariq Nasheed got wind of that video with Uncle Luke basically saying, y'all have until Sunday by the end of the day to come back to the Democratic Party. And Tariq was like, oh, wow, I like Uncle Luke. But, you know, he kind of like was threatening us, like scaring us, like, yo, you need to come back or else. And Uncle Luke didn't quite like that. So he took the social media and he had this to say. Check it out. Out on Twitter. Tariq Nasheed. Uh, oh my God. I do not like him. You know, I swear, I feel like he's an agent. An agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, they get on there, they, they fool these people with these doctors and these books and all that. And uh, they, try and, they try and separate the black community. Mind you, here's the guy who talking about descendants of slaves, you know, uh, married to a, a white lady. <laughs> You know, which I'm like, are y'all following him? You know what I'm saying? So I like, I like, I like trolling them. I get in these debates with them and I troll them. I was like, so how you feel about Minister Farrakhan? Mm. He can't speak for you. Oh, he's Jamaican. He's got Jamaican hey, ancestry. I'm like, his parents, his parents are from the islands. Mm -hmm. Hello. And then I said, what about Marcus Garvey? Oh no, Malcolm oh. X. Malcolm X. What about Malcolm X? Yes. And then they go like, oh, uh, 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 uh. I'm like, so here are black men that put their life on the line. So you're you're gonna give them these derogatory terms of names? Say that. Right. Say, say that loud. And they and they get choked up. And how we are as well, you know, it's it's all races of people that that are easily to be influenced by bad actors. He's talking all this stuff, telling other black people who they're not, right? But you housing, uh, you know what I'm saying? This Caucasian woman, which is the mother of his mixed wife, right? Right there in the house, paying for her whole lifestyle. Like making that he's getting money from black people. So you heard that. And let me just say this. I knew this was going to come up, especially with the Malcolm X and the Louis Farrakhan. I didn't expect him to say meatball, Marcus Garvey, but we'll get to him. Uh, and I knew he was going to cook Tyreek 
when it came to that wife and that mother-in-law. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. But we going to discuss it because we got to be fair with the commentary. Now, let's get into a couple of people he talked about. Let's start with Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan is the leader, I guess, of the Black Muslim Movement. I don't know what they call themselves, uh, whatever they are. The Black Muslim Movement. And he is of Jamaican and another, I guess, Caribbean descent. Now... Let me say this. Most black people didn't know this about Louis Farrakhan until recently. But we got to be completely honest about how the culture really and truly really feel about this man. I know I'm going to get flack for this, but I got to say this. Black America, black America really do not forgive Louis Farrakhan for what the involvement may or could have been in the unaliving of Malcolm X. I said it. I'm sorry, I had to say it and I had to get it out. So to be completely honest, there's a small group of us that take to Farrakhan. A lot of us respect him, but as it pertains to him being like holier than thou and this perfect person, black Americans don't care and we don't look at him as that. So there's that on Louis Farrakhan. Now, moving on to Agent Meatball over here, Marcus Garvey, black Americans didn't deal with him then and we don't deal with him now. He was a Jamaican coming all the way from Jamaica by way of Europe to tell black Americans in America that they're African and they need to go back to Africa. But what's biggest about this situation is he was in bed with a lot of people who literally hated black Americans, such as Walter Plecker. So as it pertains to Meatball, we didn't mess with him then and we don't mess with him now. So to throw him in there as if that was like... Like a, a gotcha moment. It really fell flat because Meatball hanging out with the eugenics. Walter Plecker has been exposed long, 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 long time ago. I know they put him in our books, but a lot of black Americans look at him as a traitor. And that's that on that. Moving on to Malcolm X. Now, black Americans love Malcolm X. I recently found out that his mother is of Caribbean descent, but ultimately it didn't matter because his father is full FBA. So to throw Malcolm X out there as if that was a gotcha moment was actually a fail because Malcolm X, number one, fought tooth and nail and lost his life all for the sacrifice of black Americans. You can't take that away from him. He didn't go down to the Caribbean and do it on his mama's side. He stayed here with the fight with the people in America. And that literally makes him one of us. Now, we are not going to not acknowledge the fact that he does have a Caribbean mother. And that's okay. But what we're not going to do is act as if he's a foreigner like you, Uncle Luke. So stop it with that. Now, this is where I knew he was going to cook. Tariq Nasheed's mother-in-law and his family. I knew it was going to come up. And Tariq, that's your problem because if this is true and those people are your family, you literally set yourself up for that type of failure by going so hard, FBA, FBA, and all this delineating and all that stuff and having these people living in your household. So since Luke brought up Tariq's family and it is a valid thing to bring up, we about to get into it. Let's get into it. So now it has been rumored that this is Tariq's family. This is his wife. This is his kids. Now, I don't know this to be a fact, but I do see Tariq in the photo with pajamas on. So I'm going to just go with the move and say it's probably his family, right? Now, I've heard this over and over again that Tariq's wife is biracial, that her father is from Haiti and the mother is a clear woman, right? Put a pin in that real quick. This is allegedly Tariq's sister Tyreek's sister is according to him and in their family black american and she is alleged to be married to a clear man now normally this wouldn't be important but Tyreek nasheed really preaches all of this it's all about fba all about fba fba first fba first only fba when it seems like according to what i'm hearing the sister is over there dipping her oreo in a glass of whole milk allegedly i don't know this to be fact i'm just showing y'all the pictures and what they said so this is supposed to be her and her husband and you know what i'm saying right here in the corner or whatever the case may be now let's move to the mama this is allegedly Tariq's wife and her mom as you can see the mammy is as white as snow yes clear as the day is long now again in a normal situation This wouldn't be a big deal, but Tyreek, Mr. Black, 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 Bliggity Black, a lot of people looking at Tyreek like, how dare you, especially in the diaspora. I mean, this woman is the cookie cutter, clear American. That's literally what she is. And I completely understand other people in the diaspora who feel like, yo, how you gonna separate us, but live with the clear people you drag all day? 
I ain't gonna lie. I don't blame them. I will feel the same way. And some black Americans feel like, Tyreek, you really don't have a leg to stand on because, again, if this is really his mother-in-law, then, Tyreek, you got some explaining to do. Like, what we talking about? How can you say all these things and be over here with these clear people? It just doesn't make sense. Now, it was also alleged by another YouTuber, I don't know, I didn't say it, this is what they said, that this is the woman, and she be going back to Haiti, where the girl daddy from, doing missionary work, all types of things, and messing with them churn. Now, I ain't gonna say messing with them like that, like that, but she have some uh, video with her uh, talking to these churn, and it's super, super cringy, y'all. Check it out. Marcola, the 20th. This is my friend. What is your name? ¿Cómo se llama? Come on, Lily. Love. Her name is Love. So she's part of Operation Love. Now, again, I don't know if this is truly his mother in law. I'm just giving y'all the evidence that I found. And first of all, any adult, especially the clear ones who go to these people overseas or go to these countries, these small islands, and go to talking to them churn, that is super duper cringe. And it gives me. You you know what I mean. I don't want to even say the word on this video, but it gives me really bad and icky vibes. But this lady's supposed to be over in Haiti doing missionary work because that's where her baby father, which is allegedly Tariq's wife dad, that's where they from. So it would make sense why people is like, Tariq, you don't really have a leg to stand on with this FBA stuff because you speak in FBA, but living in a whole different world. And this is why some people call Tariq a grifter. It makes sense. I feel the same way on some levels as well. Because let's be clear, if this is in fact Tariq's wife, and if this is in fact Tyreek's mother and that girl's father is of Haitian descent and not of black American, then technically Tariq, you're doing a double whammy on yourself by not only being married to a biracial woman, but a woman who's not even of black American descent. Again, I don't know this to be a fact. I'm just telling y'all what they said and according to what they said, sound about right. Tyreek, you don't get to say the things that you say and act the way that you act if this is in fact your people. And that's just that on that. So when it comes to Uncle Luke and other black people in the diaspora, they have every right to feel like Tyreek is just being divisive because it does not show up in his real life. It just doesn't. And a lot of people will say, well, who you sleep with and who you lay with does not have anything to do with how you believe in your cause and your fight for your own people. But these are the facts. People perceive things the way that they see them. And if they see that Tyreek is saying FBA, FBA, black Americans, black Americans first, only black Americans, yet these are his people, they're going to look at him and side eye him. Now, the people who follow Tyreek, they won't do it because they like him as a person. And I don't think he a bad dude. Honestly, I think he's hilarious. But at the end of the day, this is a valid argument that Uncle Luke has. If this is his people, Tyreek, you really look crazy out here in these streets. And when people come and ask Tyreek, he's very quick to deflect from it and just say it's not true. But Tyreek has yet to prove that it's even false. So that's where that problem leads here. Now back to Uncle Luke. Let me just say this. Black Americans who are finding identity and really learning that we are all not the same are not doing this to have any issues with any other people in the diaspora. We are just literally figuring out who we are. Every single other person in this so-called diaspora or pan-Africanism has had an identity except for us. We have been misnomered over and over and over again. And now that some people are waking up to the fact that, hey, I know we're all melanated. I know we're all black. We're not the same. I don't understand why some people outside of black Americans have an issue with that. And for anybody to literally get on here and gaslight us and tell us we're being divisive because we want to have our own identity, it's disingenuous and we feel like we don't even care because you're not going to gaslight us into feeling like having our own identity finally and knowing and recognizing that we have a different and particular lineage. You're not going to make us feel bad about it. So y'all can kick and scream and get mad all y'all want. But the facts of the matter are you are not going to stop this movement it is just beginning and it is gaining wings and for that I'm with Tariq Nasheed and the FBA movement even though I don't identify as foundationally black Americans because I know that outside of an identity it is actually something that Tariq has and I don't associate myself with that however the movement and the meaning behind the movement I am behind a million percent now you think this was enough but 
this stuff spilled over to Twitter and Twitter got crazy. Y'all check this out. So it's funny because I had been hearing this word tether from Tyreek and the FBAs all the time. And I never really knew what it was, but it turns out let's all get educated together. It says tether, a term used by members of the American Negro ethnic group referred to later on in history as colored African-American black FBA slash Ados to describe African and or Caribbean immigrants who moved to America for economic opportunity using the benefits of the American Negro civil rights struggle while simultaneously disparaging the history, legacy, and lineage of the Negro American movement. Now, I want to hone in on that very last part because people think Tether is just anybody that's not of Black American descent. According to this, the heaviest part Part and the biggest part you need to take away from this definition is according to the definition the person described in this definition is someone who comes to America using the benefits of black Americans and then while simultaneously disparaging the history legacy and lineage of the Negro American movement that's the part it's not because you're just a foreigner it's because a lot of those foreigners are enemies to black Americans now moving on on Twitter Luke has been doing a lot of shilling for the Democratic Party, and that's okay, but he has been very deliberate into targeting black Americans. Now, look at this. Now, I guess the Central Park Five was bought out uh, during the DNC, and Uncle Luke retweets the photo saying, here you go, FBA. Your daddy, Donald Trump, did this to FBAs. Y'all still staying with him. You guys gotta be getting paid. So now Tyreek responds and says, Luke, do you and other non-FBAs have the same smoke for Democrats? Democrats who actually prosecuted those innocent men and had them unjustly imprisoned? And the answer is absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because it's bigger than the Central Park Five. These dudes are just used to paint the whole narrative that one side is bad and the other side is good. When the fact of the matter is they were prosecuted and coerced by their parents and the DA to confess to a crime that they say they didn't commit. And this was all done under Democratic leadership. So there's that. So now Luke is all saying, yes, your job is to separate the black community powered by Steve Bannon. My question to you, do you have a problem with Malcolm X? Do you have a problem with Minister Farrakhan? Do you have a problem with Marcus Garvey? According to what you preach to your people, they should be delineating these black men who put their life on the line for black people. Tell me, would you call any of these guys a tether? I'm going to wait till you hear this one. So then Tyreek responds and says, Luke, all Caribbeans and Africans are not tethers. Just the boot licking ones who act like flunkies for their political parties by trying to trick foundational black Americans into voting for nothing in return. I'm with him on that. He didn't tell one lie. Luke also posts, if you're FBA, you can't do nothing with her. You can't date her, vote for her, nothing. I don't even know what this has to do with the whole situation, but whatever. Tariq tweets and says, Uncle Luke is out here shilling for his fellow Caribbean immigrant, Kamala Harris. And Luke told a blatant lie that I'm married to a white woman. If you are reduced to lying to get people to vote, you are in bad shape. Well, Tariq, would you bring the lady out here then? Come on now. And then nevertheless, listen, this is a back and forth on Twitter that really doesn't need to be because at the end of the day, Uncle Luke has been capping this whole time. Because people dug up old tweets from two years ago, and this is what he had to say. African Americans get nothing from the Democratic Party. All they do is use us for our vote. Who is us? You're not an African American. <laughs> anyway, then he says, I'm happy I'm a Democrat. This is in 2024, so that I don't have to explain why I'm a Republican. Luke literally switched up. Now, I have to give Tyreek this. Luke and Kamala are both of Caribbean descent, according to the people. I think Luke is Bahamian and Kamala claims her daddy is of Jamaican descent, which is not a race. So this makes sense why we should be side-eyeing Uncle Luke, okay? Now, the other people kicked in and they had something to say. And Sir Major says, black Americans should steer clear of Luther Campbell's spaces. He's exploiting black Americans for clout and content only to run back to the Democratic Party, presenting himself as a spokesperson for our community. Let's be clear. Uncle Luke, also known as Luther Campbell, has no real ties to the black community. He's neither relevant or current, and he's not a foundational black American. He is a Bahamian American, part of the Caribbean American community.
And it's not just Uncle Luke. It's people like Omarosa as well, who was once a flunky for Donald Trump. And now she's over here at the Democratic National Convention trying to play like she wasn't just over there telling black Americans they were stupid because they didn't want to get on the Trump train because he gave her a Trump check and then fired her ass. Let's get into it. So Omarosa, I don't even think she's black Americans because guess why? First of all, let's look at her name. Omarosa Manigault, that ain't even no American name. Not the first nor the last. That's not even an American name, let alone a black American name. So I wanted to do some digging into this name because Google is very slick. They like to tell us everybody is black American on Google when the fact is that is a lie because they know we're waking up to this bull crap. And when I went to Google, I looked up her name and it says, my beautiful child, that's what the name Amarosa means. Therefore, the name Amarosa can be translated to mean my beautiful child. This name holds cultural significance and carries a sense of endearment and admiration for the child. In history, the name Amarosa has been used in various African cultures, particularly among the Igbo and tribes in Nigeria. It's given Nigerian. That's what it's given. And so this is what I'm saying. All of these people move and flip and flop the way they want to do it all the time. And we're waking up to it. And the ones who are cosplaying are the ones that we're getting rid of. And as it pertains to Scamela, it has been known throughout her entire career that she has identified herself as Indian, even sometime Asian. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if I've ever recalled her identifying herself as Jamaican. I mean, if we really want to be frank about it, Jamaica, like I've never even heard her identify herself as Jamaican, but now she's cosplaying black American and we're not having it. And as it pertains to Uncle Luke, the man who has literally destroyed black American women in our culture single handedly, according to him, because he wants his props. You don't get to say anything to us because like this person says, most low IQ as degenerates like Uncle Luke who have ties to destroying and selling out FBA community with help from DNC machine are strongly deflecting and projecting. Luke, who looks like a druggy drunkie and leading us to slaughter should shut the F up. Mr. Pop That Coochie, Black Sexploitation King, has done enough damage to our community. Tariq has helped separate us from the tether sellout scum like him. Let's move on. Some other people have some things to say. Now, this person says the OG blank trafficking degenerate. He added nothing but you know what and you know what to society. He isn't one to be forgiving anyone or anything. The next person says Uncle Luke needs to have two seats with his tap dancing Florida sellout behind. I am a black woman who left the Democratic plantation for the Green Party and have never been happier. Luke wants black men to vote for no platform and no plan for black America. He wants black and I didn't catch the rest. Well, then the next person says... Tell Luke crooked mouth ass we good. He spoke about the brotherhood of the black community and yet he left the artist two live crew broke and penniless and sold them in the catalog to a blank cross dressing blank guy who made them beg for money of their own music. I'm, gl- I'm mad I didn't get the rest of this tweet, but bro going in, go in brother. But this is what black America is reflecting as it pertains to Uncle Luke. Black Americans are no longer blinded under that BS Pan-African umbrella, DEI, people of color, black and brown community, the terms minority and diversity. We're done. We're not doing any of those anymore. And nobody is going to stop this movement because it is going to go as far as it needs to go. And to be completely honest, whoever feels a way about it tells us everything we need to know moving forward as black Americans. Because the fact of the matter is we have realized that our ancestors worked very, very hard, not only for us, but also to have other people to come over, especially people of color. And when they got here, they're literally taking all of our resources and then getting mad at us because we are waking up to it. Now, I want to leave you with this. What has been going on with the foreigners getting all the benefits that solely belong to black Americans, foundationally black Americans, is so obvious that even other races, the clear people and culture is even talking about it. Now, granted, she's talking about it from a perspective where it benefits the clear people. However, she's still able to recognize that set aside that were put aside just for black Americans, the people who fought through slavery, Jim Crow, redlining, all of these things. 
those people deserve the set asides that are being given to Indians, Asians, Latinas, and all these other people. And what Ann Coulter is talking about is the fact that not only does this affect the black Americans who are not getting these set asides, the clear people who've been stealing them for ages and ages, now we aren't getting the set asides. Although it's kind of a backhanded situation, the point is please listen to what Ann Coulter says about who these set asides benefits and all these things belong to. And I'll come back with some commentary. Well, I write about this a little bit in my book, Mugged, about racial demagoguery and, and also in Adios America about immigration. And that is the, the important point he should have made is that the entire purpose of affirmative action, set asides, um, um, civil rights laws, laws that limit constitutional rights to freedom of contract, freedom of association, all of that was to make up for the legacy of, of slavery and Jim Crow. So unless these benefits are going to, you know, roughly defined foundational black Americans, the descendants of, of American slaves, um, you've taken away the whole purpose of this. And that is exactly what's happened once we got this this huge load of immigrants. Now, you know, a Thai who arrived on Wednesday will get an advantage applying to college, applying to corporations over over, oh, well, a heterosexual white male in particular. That's the biggest hate group. But any white American and and all of the civil rights laws have been or and affirmative action and so on have been twisted into just anti white hatred. And, and open, egregious discrimination. Um, so to make the point that that Kamala isn't a foundational black American, I'm always pointing out to to black people. Um, hey, have you noticed Indians are getting all the good diversity jobs? What did we do to Indians? We didn't enslave them. Most of these immigrants coming in, most are from 90% of legal immigrants are from the third world. Um, and mostly we've just run around saving them from earthquakes and tornadoes <laughs> and coups and starvation. You know, they owe us, we don't owe them. But to switch from the concept of integration and civil rights for black Americans to this BSE diversity, it's nothing but discrimination against white people. And that point should be made not just to, as I think Trump is always thinking, oh, he's going to win the black vote. He's not going to win the black vote. Um, you ought to do things because they're the right thing to do, not because this is an appeal to black people, like releasing criminals. He thinks he's going to get the black vote by, by being soft on crime. Anyway, um, not only to point out to, to black Americans that their history is being stolen by immigrants, but to remind white Americans that this whole diversity thing is just discrimination against them. You still want to vote for the Democrats? So we have to pay attention to what Ann is saying here. What Ann is saying is, hey, black Americans, they're taking all of your resources, all of your things and giving it to these Indians and all these other immigrants who did not suffer through any of the things that you suffer through. Actually, they're just coming here and we don't owe them anything. Now, Ann has this twisted way of thinking about it. And I mean, I'm not even mad at her. She's a clear woman. So she's talking about clear people. And she thinks that now this affects clear people and it's an anti-clear situation going on and I don't have a dog in that fight I truly don't care but ultimately and first of all we're not about to let you say it's a problem for us because you want to be the only one steal from us let's start there however she made some great points when she says hey black Americans you're the one that's being taken away from while all these other newly immigrant groups come in steal your legacy steal your history and steal all the resources that were put aside for you. So the thing is, black Americans are no longer just voting for anything. We're not voting for hope. We're not voting for change. We're not voting for wishes. We want tangibles. And if we want tangibles, that's okay. And it's fine. We don't need anybody impeding the process of black Americans. And we are starting to separate ourselves so that we can legally fight for the things that belong to us. Now, I want to leave you with this video as it pertains to this woman speaking about what our ancestors fought for. And what she's simply saying is our ancestors 
ancestors fought for us to gain and for us to live better and for us to not go through the things that they went through. Not for everybody except us. This woman is very powerful. I love everything that she says in this video. So I'm going to leave you guys with that in parting. And I'm curious to know what you think about this situation. Drop down in the comments. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on all platforms. And I'll see y'all later. Bye. About our lineage. Who are we? We're black Americans. I can trace my family back, my ancestors back to the 1700s. Okay? So we're black Americans. We have been here since the founding of the country. That matters. Does it not? Does it matter that our parents, our ancestors were here since the founding, since the 1600s, since the 1700s? Is that relevant? Is that significant? Yes, I think it is. Well, I mean, my ancestors didn't slave and sweat and, you know, toil, toil and all that hard work that they did for Joanne Reed to have a job. She's the first, she's from the Congo. They worked for black Americans to have jobs. They did all that for black Americans, not people from the Congo who are first generation Americans. Not even Kamala Harris, who's Indian American and uh, Jamaican. Right. My ancestors didn't work for Kamala Harris to have these benefits. They worked for black Americans to have benefits. I think even Obama is not even a black American. This is all, this is why using color, the skin color is not sufficient. It's, American it's, it's confusing. Right. And this is why I say white Americans and black Americans have been in America the longest since its founding. And that is significant. That matters. That history matters. And so this is why, you know, and, and I don't know why so many, and you know, I want to get into this issue about black women, black American women supporting, I know it's nonprofit, and but Black American women don't understand what most of them, some do, but most of them don't understand. They think everything is about skin color, and that's a superficial analysis of the situation. They're not looking at the history. They don't know the history, and they're just so wedded to the political left position, embracing all of their policies and their policies have been detrimental to black America. They need to get away from that embrace of all these policies that are the detriment. So what I'm thinking, they're not doing their homework. They're not reading this cast your bucket where you are. Cast down your bucket where they're not reading this history. They're not, they're being superficial. They're just watching the television and going along with what the politicians say. That is not sufficient. Mr. Carroll. How you give the voodoo doll time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo doll is? The nigga you just had up here.